this video, we're going to be looking at one of the most essential tools in Affinity Photo, the gradient tool used for tasks as varied as balancing exposure, enhancing focus via vignette, creating an eye catching background for a social media post for all of these tasks, knowing the gradient tool is a must. So in this video, we're going to be running through what the gradient tool is, how to use it, its drawbacks and more. But first, let's start off by answering what is the gradient tool. The gradient tool is a tool used to apply and adjust color or grayscale gradients, where a gradient is a smooth transition between tones or colors. Some common applications of the gradient tool are applying color gradients. The gradient tool is used to create smooth transitions between two or more colors across a vector, text, or layer. The second application is color transparency. The gradient tool can be used to create transitions from opaque to transparent for effects like fades or vignettes. The third application is simulate effects. The gradient can be used to reproduce effects like graduated neutral density filters to balance exposure such as darkening a bright sky in a landscape photo. By the way, in my last video, I did demonstrate how to use the gradient tool to balance exposure via exposure blending, do check out that video if you have not done so. I'll leave a link in the description. Next, let's run through how to use the tool to create a gradient. So here I am in Affinity Photo. The first step is to select the tool from the toolbar. The second step is to ensure you have a layer selected. And the third step is to click and drag on the canvas. The direction and length of your drag determines the gradient's angle and spread. And just like that, the gradient is created. Next, let's move on to customizing a gradient. When the gradient tool is active, you can customize the gradient via the context toolbar. You can change its type. Currently, the default type is linear where colors transition across a straight line. Other commonly used types include radial where instead of a straight line, colors radiate in a circular pattern and elliptical, which is similar to radial except colors can be stretched to an oval shape. When you click and drag on the gradient tool, a path appears with color stops or nodes at the start and end as you can see here. These stops define the colors of the gradient. You can add more stops by clicking the gradient path to introduce more colors. You can also drag the stops to reposition them. The gradient tool also has a midpoint slider on which to control the spread of colors, such as to make one color dominate more of the gradient, as in this example. To change the colors of the gradient, you can simply use the color panel or the swatches. Another option to modify gradient characteristics is via clicking the gradient swatch. From the resulting dialog, you can adjust the colors, add more stops, etc. That being said, I do find this method more unintuitive and less flexible than the previous method of simply manipulating the control directly on the canvas. Next, let's talk about some drawbacks of the gradient tool. Unfortunately, Affinity Photos implementation is not perfect. The first drawback of the gradient tool is its destructive nature when applied to pixel layers. When you apply a gradient directly to a pixel layer in Affinity Photo, the gradient permanently alters the layer's pixel data, meaning you cannot adjust color stops, its direction or opacity after the fact without starting over. To demonstrate the problem, I'll add a gradient to the pixel layer. I'll unselect and reselect the layer. As you can see, the gradient control has disappeared and there's no way to bring it back to make further edits like adding more stops, etc. You have to do it all over again. Not a great workflow. The good news though is there is an alternative and that is to use a fill layer instead of a pixel layer. Unlike the pixel layer, the fill layer will preserve editability to demonstrate this, I'll add in a new fill layer by clicking layer, new fill layer. I'll add in the gradient.
I'll once again unselect and reselect. As you can see, unlike with the pixel layer, the control remains visible with the fill layer, allowing for further edits. Do note as well that the same editability is also present when using the gradient tool on vectors and text. It's only the pixel layer which is limited. The second drawback of the gradient tool is the lack of intuitiveness when it comes to saving gradient settings. To demonstrate this issue, let's create a gradient. And you can imagine this can be a very time consuming process, particularly when dealing with a large number of stops. Looking at the swatch, you can see that there is no option to save the gradient. So if you somehow closed and reopened Affinity, as I'm doing here, you can see that the gradient which you have painstakingly created is gone and you'll need to start all over. Thankfully though, while it is not obvious, there are options to saving the gradient. The first and easiest is simply to save the project in the Affinity Photo format. As you can see here, this preserves the layer and the underlying gradient. The second option for saving is to save the gradient as a style. To do that, first you need to add the Styles panel by clicking Window, Styles. Then with the Fill layer selected, click the Menu button and then click Add Style from Selection. To test that it's working, I'll close the current project and create a new one. I'll add in a new fill layer. I'll click the style. And as you can see, the gradient we've just created has been added in. Bravo! A third option is to save the gradient via the swatches panel. For this, you have to add the swatches panel by clicking Window, Swatches. With the fill layer selected, I'll choose gradients from the drop down. I'll click Add Fill to Palette. And as you can see, the gradient is saved. On the other hand, while it worked this time, I find this third method of using swatches for saving inconsistent. Sometimes it saves just the individual color, sometimes the entire gradient. Not sure why that is so. Nevertheless, due to its unpredictability, I don't recommend this method for saving. So now that we know the essentials of how to use the gradient tool, let's apply what we've learned to an actual problem Let's improve this image's plain background with an eye-catching gradient background. To do that, I'll first configure our gradients. Instead of thinking of specific colors, I'll instead base the colors on a reference image which I'd like to copy the colors from. I'll add in the colors of the reference image to the Swatches Panels palette. To do that, I'll use the Picker tool to select a color. I'll click Add Current Fill to Palette. There, the first color is added. I'll repeat the same process for the rest of the colors. There, all the relevant colors have now been added to the palette. Next, let's create our gradient with these colors. I'll add a new fill layer and drag in a gradient. I'll modify the gradient colors by clicking on the individual stops. And there you go, the gradient is done. For reusability, let's save the gradient as a style. Next, let's do one more gradient with a different set of colors. And there you go, both gradients have now been saved as a style. As the gradients have now been created, let's now work on the product image. I'll remove the background. I'll add in a new fill layer for our new background. I'll click on our just created style. 
And there you go, with just one tap, our new product image has been upgraded with a more attractive gradient background. Next, let's see how it looks like with the other gradient. And as you can see, that's not looking bad as well. So there you go, that's how you use the gradient tool in Affinity Photo. I hope you found this video helpful. Let me know if you have any questions on the gradient tool and any tips you have to get the most out of it. Write it down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And if you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share to help keep the videos coming. Until the next video, I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.